Welcome back. We turn our attention to the civil service reform with President Bola Tinubu's recent directive, the full implementation of the Stephen Oronsaye report. Now, this report commissioned in 2011, that's when it was commissioned but not presented, uh, has long been a source of debate, you know, promising cost-saving measures through the rationalization of agencies uh, of government and potential, potential job reductions. Now, in 2011, former Nigerian President Dr. Goodluck Jonathan established the Presidential Committee on Restructuring and Rationalization of Federal Government Parastatals, Commissions, and agencies under uh, the leadership of the former head of Nigeria's federal civil service, Stephen Orosaye, hence the name, the Orosaye Report. In April 2012, the committee submitted a 800-page report, which established that there were, at the time, 541 federal government parastatals, agencies, and commissions. The panel recommended that the government reduce um, the number of statutory agencies from 263 to 161. That's the number of statutory, because we had both statutory and non-statutory agencies. It also recommended the scrapping of 38 agencies and the merger of 14 agencies into departments within ministries. Now, that was under former Good Luck, uh, President Goodluck Jonathan. He, however, did not implement the report while he was in power. Now, he handed this report over to uh, President Mohamed Buhari, but just to t remind, remind you that um, the former President Goodluck Jonathan instituted um, a committee uh, to study that report and present a white paper headed by uh, the then Attorney General and Minister of Justice, Mohamed Adoke Essien. Now, that white paper is what he presented to Mohamed Buhari. President Buhari, on assuming power in 2015, also promised to implement the recommendation of the Stephen Rossian report, but it wasn't done. Um, and our president, the president, uh, Buhari, at the time, um, instituted another committee to study the white paper of um, the Jonathan administration and present another white paper. And it was announced in Buhari's time that this Orosaya report would be implemented. In fact, after a Federal Executive Council meeting, what happened uh, this week on Monday uh, at the uh, Tinubu FEC meeting also happened. They announced to the press um, that they were going to implement the report and they sent a committee to implement that report. It wasn't done. Buhari handed over to Bola Tinubu. Upon assuming office in 2023, he set out to implement one of the recommendations of that report by notifying, if you remember, professional bodies and councils in Nigeria that the government will no longer fund them, starting from the 2024 budget. And this is in line with the decision of the Presidential Committee on Salaries. Now, at the time of submitting the Rossier report, there were 541 government parastatals, commissions and agencies in the country. But today, that figure is close to 1,000, according to a report I saw. What does this mean for governance in Nigeria and the um, you know, financial and fiscal health of the government? We have Osai Taiwo Ioreolua. Uh, he's a public uh, policy implementation consultant. He joins us via video link. Uh, Taiwo Ioreolua, good evening to you. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, we have Razak Fatai, an economist. Razak, good evening to you as well. Yeah, good evening. Thanks for having me. All right. Um, we just, you just heard me say that um, the Jonathan administration created a committee to study the Oronsa reports and come up with a white paper, handed over that white paper to Buhari, who created another committee to study the white paper to come up with another white paper. He didn't implement it, though he said he will. Uh, why has it taken this long for the three administrations that have held this report over 12 years to implement it. I want to start with you, uh, Osain Taiwo Oreolua. Thank you very much. Um, it's unfortunate that we have a government or a system of government that has failed to acknowledge and appreciate intellectuals like uh, Oral Sawyer. That report was an articulate, was a well-articulated report, and um, it only details the fact that the president Bola Metinuba administration is, um, is key towards excellence and um, a good performance in office. And only gives hopes for Nigerians who voted him and those who did, who did not even vote him and who are even facing the challenges today. And we hope that um, the, 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 there is light after the tunnel. Having said so, um, it's only sad that after 12 years of um, this wonderful report, after gathering a lot of dust in the um, in um, Asorok, um, the president actually saw that there was a need 
for the country to cut costs, <laughs> even though so many political parties had adjudicated and advocated that they were going to cut costs when they come to office. There was always a template for, cost, cost, um, for cutting costs in governance since, since over 12 years ago through this report. And so it's so, um, it's so fine now that um, the president, after the Federal Executive Council meeting yesterday, um, announced this uh, wonderful uh, implementation. And he has given a 12 weeks um, grace of, of proper analysis to see what can be done and things that need to be done for proper implementation. And we hope that those who are saddled with the responsibility for the implementation of this um, report will do adequately what is necessary to ensure that this report sees the light of day and is properly implemented. All right. So you're giving credit to Bolatin, who was the one who finally is implementing this report. I want to go over to you, uh, Razak. You, your thoughts on, on the length of time it's taken to see this uh, report uh, breathe, as it were. All right, thank you. Uh, on the question you asked on why it has taken so long, um, first, let me express that it's really sad that it took us this long to uh, address something that would have been very critical to uh, quality of public service delivery, but also helping us to manage our costs at a level that is sustainable for our finances to be able to drive transformative growth uh, in the country. And it's really sad that it's, it's, it's taken this long to 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 even start conversation of uh, of getting implemented, even though that has happened before now, and I would just like to say that the reason why I think it has taken so long, um, uh, also when, when you look at the context very well, the report, initial report was, you know, came out around 2012, right, uh, for uh, proposed for implementation, and just two years later we had. Uh, mm -hmm. A crisis, uh, an economic crisis, when crude oil price crashed, you know, to a very low point. And what that meant was that um, even if the government had a view to, to implement the report at that time, uh, it became very imperative to probably hold on because, uh, again, uh, the country was in crisis, and it's not a good time to, to lay off workers or uh, to, to to reduce the workforce, given the challenges. And we've seen that since that time, there have been more crises, right? Uh, we've seen the COVID-19 crisis in 2020 and the Ukraine war, and all of those crises have made it increasingly difficult, right, for any government to want to really follow through with the implementation of uh, such reform. But notwithstanding, uh, the delay had meant, you know, additional cost uh, to governance uh, in the sense that uh, at the time when the recommendation came in 2012, uh, we spent about 2070 Around 76% of our revenue was going to uh, towards non-debt uh, recurrent expenditure. And today, uh, by 2022, we see that that has even increased to about 79%. And the fact that uh, we also had to incur so much debt to the point that we now spend 150% of our revenue uh, to, to, to on, on, um, on uh, recurrent expenditure as at the end of 2022 meant that we just can't continue like this, right? So I'm even surprised that people have to even be, you know, crying out, you know, to, to the government to, to reduce cost of governance before uh, President Tinubu is having to take action on that. And I'm actually worried... OK, that, I, I'll, I'll, come, I'll um, come back to you shortly, uh, uh, Razak. Okay. I'll come back to you. Um, but it seems you're saying that, um, yes, in the cost of governance in terms of recurrent expenditure spent on the civil service is, has been increasing over the years. But right now, we're having to spend more as far as uh, uh, um, debt and debt servicing is concerned. Um, uh, mm -hmm. back, yeah, back to you, uh, Oreolua. Yesterday, after the FEC, uh, Hadiza Balausman, special advisor to the president on policy coordination, um, addressed the press and said that uh, there will be no layoffs, you know, retrenchments, and nobody is going to lose their jobs. How feasible or possible do you think uh, this is? Well, um, Mano Osman was just trying to make what we call a statement of hope for the country and for the people of Nigeria, considering the economic hardship we are currently facing. But in the realistic set of it, the truth of the matter is a lot of workers would go. The original report earlier stated that over 102 persons who had NDAs would leave. So it's, it's actually sacrosanct that when you do measures like this, these are very Un unequivocally, um, um, they are realistic facts that these such things will happen. 
Um, for him, he's just trying to keep the hopes alive, considering the fact that a lot of Nigerians are facing a lot of economic challenges right now. There's high cost of living, there is insecurity, and when you range it on the fact that you put in um, retrenchment again, that will actually probably agitate a lot of minds. But the truth of the matter is this. If this unnecessary report is supposed to be properly implemented and as, as is stated in the white, um, white paper, I'm sorry to say, a lot of people must leave. Mm. Okay, so you don't, you don't see the possibility of people uh, not losing their civil servants, federal civil servants not losing their jobs. Uh, how about you, Zach? All right, thank you. Um, I, I strongly agree with the, the other speaker because when you say that you're trying to make a system more efficient uh, and you're trying to cost cost, right, uh, especially within this context, it only means one thing, right? Reducing the size of your workforce or reducing how much you spend per unit you know, of your workforce. And if you look at where we are today, uh, we are at the point where we are having conversation of minimum wage review, right, which means that we are not talking about reducing the costs per head. That, that's not the conversation here. It's really about uh, reducing the workforce uh, in a way that helps service delivery to be efficient, to make the ease of, to improve the ease of doing business, to, uh, to, to, to reduce frictions, right, within agencies that perform similar function, to reduce confusion to people who have to deal with these agencies. So for me, I think saying that, uh, oh, no job will be lost, Perhaps I would like to throw that question back to uh, to the government official to say, okay, which which report that it implementing, whether it's not a Russell report, right? Uh, maybe it's another report. And uh, the other thing I probably want to even add again is the fact that, uh, like you mentioned at the beginning of this program, at that time there were just 51, 541 agencies, and today. We now have close to 1,000, which even mean that, you know, beyond trying to implement the oral soil report as it was at that time, it meant that there is need for further review, right, of the changes that have happened since then, right, to know uh, what else needs to go, what else needs to be managed for efficiency, uh, and what else needs to happen to make sure that we are delivering uh, value. So are, are you advocating for another white paper committee? That would be the third. So, so my, I think what I'm advocating for is to begin the implementation, but there's need for additional review, right? To um, additional review to be able to even review all of the agencies that have been created since that time, right? To know if they were even necessary, right? To know if they needed to even be matched with some of the uh, existing ministries. So mm -hmm. for me, I think that also needs to happen. And the other thing again that I okay. think uh, Please hold the thought, for, uh, Razak, for time. We'll go on a quick break. And for those of you watching, stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's still Politics HQ right here on New Central Television. I'm Kofi Bartels, and we're still looking at the implications of the decision by Nigeria's uh, federal government to begin the implementation of a long uh, completed report. This was commissioned in 2011, submitted in 2012, an 800 page report, and Nigerians affectionately call the Oron Sanye report. That's a report on the rationalization of uh, federal government, uh, the restructuring and rationalization of federal government, perhaps state commissions and agencies. This was done uh, when former President Goodluck Jonathan was in power. I guess uh, this evening we have Osai Taiwo. Oreo Lua is a policy uh, implementation consultant. He'll tell us how this policy can be implemented successfully. Also an economist, Razak Fatai. Uh, no wonder he's also uh, very concerned about the economic uh, implications as far as jobs are concerned. Both men being true to uh, their calling. Gentlemen, uh, once again, thanks for your time. Let's step it a notch higher. Um, I want to go back to you, uh, Oreo Lua Tai. Um, some Nigerians are of the opinion that the Tinubu administration's body language does not portray uh, an eagerness to reduce government spending. We're talking about reduction of government spending. For instance, today, a list of the president's delegation to Qatar, I'd like to believe you've seen it, shows that uh, his son, Shay Tinubu, is part of the entourage to Qatar. And some Nigerians are concerned about that. What's your take on this? Okay, let me let me say something very clear. Um, the, 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 it depends on what side of the um, coin you're looking at it from. Um, if you look at this government, this government is a government that listens and has been listening 
right from May 29. Um, a lot of governments today, um, in the past, have um, adjudicated for subsidy removal. And a lot of them have failed, or none of them actually took that bold step to actually remove the subsidy. And from May 29, 2023, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu took that bold step to remove subsidy. That is boldness. Now, this is a government that has always listened. And why am I saying this is because, but if we remember um, the, last, um, um, the last meeting that held in UAE, in UAE if I'm not wrong, and we, where we had over a thousand delegates following the president. A lot of people had indicated that um, these numbers were so many, and then there was a need to cut costs in governance. And then the government announced that the number, there were statutory number of persons and personnel that would follow the president, the vice president, the first lady, and other, um, it, uh, other people in the government. This government is ready to learn and listen. However, if the government, currently the government has over if I'm not wrong, about 50 ministers, if the Orange report implementation process of 12 weeks takes effect, and that is why I said earlier, when the committee are dedicated for this responsibility, takes what is necessary, necessary steps, because the, gov the, the president has given them a go ahead, a marching order, to look at the, one, the executive implementation, two, the, the, um, the constitutional implementation, and three, the judicial implementation of it. If they're doing their job as, as regarded or the way they're supposed to do it and execute it, I can bet you that we would have a reduction in, also in the ministerial list and the ministerial nominee. That is very sure. However, when you compare the list of the government or the list of people who are supposed to travel in, um, who traveled in Qatar, who, are, who traveled in UA, to UAE compared to Qatar right now, you realize that there's a cut down of, uh, what you call it, of names. Of so, 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 uh, are you saying that uh, the body language of the Tinubu administration shows that they are interested, uh, they're eager to cut costs? Or are you Obviously, saying that? because it's not, it's not even about body language. It's the fact that the government does not even have the revenue, the re the revenue to actually carry out the responsibility for government. So are government. you, say, are you so saying the government is serious about cutting costs? Of course, the government is serious about cutting costs. All right, Razak, 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 Razak over, over to you. Because if you read the government... Yeah, yeah, because of time, because of time, because of time. We have just three minutes. I, I'm sorry, Aurel, because, because of time. Cost, yeah, yeah, Razak Fatai, where do you stand on this? Razak. All right, thank you. Where I stand, the government has been showing mixed signals. They've been showing mixed signals since, since they came in on, on this issue of cutting costs, right? They started out with having many ministries, many ministers, which is unprecedented uh, and doesn't really show going in the direction of cutting costs. Uh, but we've seen how they've been very bold with removing first subsidy and all that. But even when you look at the president, you know, immediate, you know, uh, cabinet and also his team, the heads and the rest, you see that uh, I mean, the body language just doesn't tell that this is a government that wants to cut costs, right? I am in people just sporadically doing what we really don't know uh, of what value some of those positions would be. And uh, and the fact that when you even see some of the approvals that we made, you know, uh, following the removal of subsidy, it felt more tilted towards supporting, you know, political offices rather than you know, helping to alleviate uh, the issues and challenges that Nigerians face, right? So for me, I would say that uh, it's been mixed. The signal has been very mixed. And I'm also worried about the sense of urgency uh, that this government has attitude towards getting things done, right? Why did it have to take up to this time when people are now clamoring to protest before they make decisive steps? All right. All right. All right. All right. Uh, uh, Aurel, what, what do you say? Aurel, what do you say? I disagree a bit. I yes. want to disagree a bit with Razak. And why am I saying this is because when you say mixed feelings, and um, if, you remember, if Razak made mention of something in his um, earlier, uh, earlier statement, he said the, um, the gov previous government failed to implement the Honor Science report because of certain ex excuses they were given. The truth of the matter is this. Nigeria has never been in the worst economic hardship in its history until now, and this is when the government is taking the bold step to implement the Honor Sayers report. 
That is bold step. If you say that because right. of the dwindling price of oil in the international market from less than $100 in 2012, that made Jonathan and administration not to implement the Russian report, and moving forward to 2020 or uh, 2021, or uh, 2021, he said COVID. Those are flimsy excuses. That All right, we, we have to go. However, I must ask, I, yeah. I, I must Lua, we have to go. The President Tinubu yes. for giving we, right We have to go, but I, I would have right loved to ask for your thoughts. We have to go. I would have loved to ask for your thoughts on, you know, the fact that the federal government still spent uh, money, 160 million naira for each senator and house of reps member to buy foreign produced vehicles, Toyota Land Cruiser Prados, um, if they, but I, there's no time to ask about that. But thank you, uh, Taiwo Arelua Public, uh, sorry, Policy Implementation Consultant and Razak Fatai Economist, we've been uh, privileged to have you tonight. My name is Kofi Bartels, as a size of a package. We return tomorrow. Good night.